It's about time the rest of the world caught up with the science and statistics that make up this quirkiest of games. Cricket, more popular than you think. It might be the strangest game ever invented, but it's certainly one of the most popular. Only soccer has more fans, 3.5 billion worldwide. With an estimated audience of 2.5 billion, cricket is the second most popular sport worldwide, even though it is only a major professional sport in a few countries. But given there are 1 billion Indians in the world, and most of them love cricket, it's not surprising it is vastly more popular than American football, baseball, basketball, golf or tennis. The first thing to understand is that there are several different formats of the world game of cricket, but they all have one thing in common. It is based on a bowler and a batter. It is 11 people per team and the game is divided into overs. One over is six balls bowled to the batter. After six balls, the bowler is changed and the new one bowls from the other end of the batting crease and the overs continue to alternate as such using different bowlers. Cricket's three main formats are 2020, popularly known as T20, where each team's batsmen face a total of 20 overs to see how many runs they can score. One team bats its entire allocation of 20 overs first, setting a run score the other team then has the chance to beat. This game lasts about four hours, as long as the weather holds up, of course. Then there is one day cricket, a game lasting, as the name indicates, a whole day, where each team has 50 overs each. And then there is the longer game, where matches last up to three, four or five days, depending on their importance. So-called test matches between nations are held over five days, and each team has two innings at the crease with unlimited overs to make its runs. No one, though, can predict whether it will remain sunny and dry for five days in a row, so the weather often plays an important part in test matches. Cricketers learn to become amateur meteorologists to help them make decisions during the game. The most famous test series of all is the Ashes between England and Australia, where the two countries play for an urn containing the ashes of a burnt cricket ball. The Ashes is a series of high tension, where the teams have often been criticised for the unsavouriness of their sledging of each other while play is continuing. Sledging is where the bowling and fielding team continually talk to the batters, trying to break their concentration. The weather intervenes in many ways over the course of a five-day test. Clouds or wind, for instance, can help the bowlers move the ball in the air and bounce it erratically off the pitch, confusing the batter. This is called swing bowling. Other bowlers use the seam of the cricket bowl to produce movement. Slower bowlers spin the ball, delivering off cutters, leg cutters and the most confusing ball of all, the googly. Batters wear lots of pads on the legs, thighs and forearms, groin boxes, helmets and steel toe cap shoes because some of those bowlers can whip down the ball at up to 100 miles per hour and bounce it up to head height. Rain will stop the match for a period, sometimes whole days are wiped out. Then captains of the teams might have to rethink their strategies according to the weather forecast for the next day. The bowling side have to get 10 of the team's batters out by knocking over the wicket the batter is defending or catching the ball that has been struck before it hits the floor. Only when it has 10 batters out can the bowling side have a bat itself. If it is raining heavily and the game has to be stopped, the batting team may declare their innings, setting a realistic target for the other team. If they bowl the other team out before they reach the target, they have won the match. If the other team knocks off more runs, however, surpassing the target they have been set, they have won the match. So that's what happens in the batting square in the middle of the pitch. But what about the rest of the field? This is where the fun starts. First, a batter can score one to six runs per ball in the following ways. One run comes literally from the two batters at the crease, running to the other's end before one of the outfielders can get the ball back to the bowler. 
Four runs can be scored when the batter hits the ball to the boundary rope at the edge of the pitch. Six runs can be scored when the ball is hit over the rope without touching the ground. The team's ten outfielders take up well-studied positions where the ball is most likely to fly so that they are in place to catch or stop it. The wicketkeeper stands behind the stumps the bowler is trying to knock over. The slips eagerly await the batter's slightest mistake next to the wicketkeeper. Third man is on the boundary to the right of the slips. Then there are some other strangely named positions, such as square leg, short leg and long leg. Some are just too close to the batter for comfort, such as the aptly known silly point or silly leg. Put a helmet on. Cricket is not just a delight for the amateur meteorologist though, or the lexicologist. It is also a statistician's dream. The game's nerds pore over how many runs batters have made, what they average over the series or the entire season, or even their whole careers. The nerds also want to know which bowlers have taken 10 wickets in a match and how many times. How many runs did they concede doing this? Who statistically is the best spin or seam bowler? Who is the fastest bowler? Which fielder has taken the most catches to get a batter out? And so on. Cricket is not a game for the faint-hearted, but it is known for its nice meals. Highly creative chefs have been known to make food for the teams. Yes, the teams get to eat. There's a lunch break and an afternoon tea break during the game. In England, where the game was first played in villages in the 16th century, Cricket is also the art of the sandwich and of the cake. Shot! Oh, well played!